Relationships, be they of friends or family members, will more often than not have their hidden complications that almost always go unseen until the consequences of their unfolding become impossible to ignore. Yet love, trust and loyalty are assumed to be the underpinning of such bonds, while actually beneath the surface lies a more profound, undercurrent control, jealousy and manipulation. We believe people who are closest to us, our subconscious mind apparently always thinks that their intentions will always be pure. What if the love is poisonous and the support tainted, born from their own vulnerabilities or unresolved ambitions? What if the people we hold dear and the ones who proclaim to love us the most turn out to be those subtly keeping us captive in their expectations, holding us back from true freedom? This is the reality that seldom gets unbolted and stares one in the face. Frenemies, unconscious manipulation of family dynamics in full sight. Frenemies, a delicate balancing act. Friendship, under ideal settings, should look after the needs of each other, support, trust and understanding. Yet there are those friendships that never are. Under the seeming loyalty in some relationships, there may be hidden manipulation, jealousy and competition, those frenemies who do not climb on with your success, but quietly tear it down. A frenemy doesn't always act with overt malice. As a matter of fact, most of the time, they themselves remain unconscious of their darker motives. Their sabotage is insidious, buried under a patina of kindness and support, tugged by insecurities yet to be faced. The friend who's always there advising, counselling, but it somehow is advice that leads to stagnation rather than growth. They would bring you off course from opportunities in a very subtle way, planting seeds of doubt in your head, like doubting your capabilities or decisions. They just hold on tight in their circle, not letting one grow past them. Behind every reassuring word lurks a subconscious craving to bring you closer to them, not because they have your best interests at heart, but because your success is perceived as representing a threat to their self-esteem. There's an inbuilt push and pull factor in such relationships. All seems to be well on the surface, yet beneath lurks a raging power game. Frenemies feed off of the contrast between the public display of friendship and the personal competition that's actually fueling the interaction. They love it when people perceive them as your best friend, while at the same time silently seething at the very idea of you overtaking them. In many ways, they are a shadow to your own growth, silently wishing that you would continue being bound at their level. Of course, trying to break free from the clutches of a frenemy is further complicated by their subtlety. These behaviours are only noticed with a great degree of self-awareness and the courage it takes to step away from a relationship no longer serving the growth of the self. In a world that prizes connections at all costs, the letting go of a friendship, especially an apparently beneficial one, can be considered nothing short of betrayal. But in the longer term, it is only in liberating ourselves from these insidious influences that we are truly able to thrive. A familial love, manipulation hidden behind the scenes, one of the most profound relationships we experience is that between a parent and child. Yet even at the heart of the most well-meaning familial love, there can be hidden currents of control and expectations and unresolved traumas that distort the purity of such a bond. Parents, so well-intentioned, can unconsciously manipulate their children. It is not born out of cruelty, but rather out of their unresolved issues, unmet ambitions, insecurities, and the deep need for validation. Consider the overprotective mother who lavishes a child with love, but uses this very love as her means of control. She is forever intervening in the life of the child, not because she believes the latter is incompetent to fend for themselves, but because she is afraid of being redundant. She defined herself through her child's dependency on her. This dynamic creates a bond that's less about nurturing than about making sure the child stays limbed onto her. Perhaps unconsciously, the mother guilt trips her child for seeking any independence from her. She couches her actions in terms of protection, but the implication is softly there. Without her, the child would be lost. More often than not, such behaviours have their roots in the parents' failed experiences or unrealised dreams. Being unsuccessful in their own endeavours, the parent projects their expectations onto the child. They want the child to succeed because it will justify their own decisions, not because it is something desired by the child. 
that makes the child a personification of the unfulfilled potential of the parent, rather than being his or her own person. It's a generational gap that makes this dynamic even more complex. It's easy for parents to think they know what's best for their children from their experience. But the world has drastically changed. Technological and social shifts have ushered in new challenges and opportunities with which parents, steeped in the values and knowledge of an era long past, may not be in the best position to understand. Their advice, though well-meaning, may no longer be appropriate for a rapidly evolving world. One can only be liberated from the more subtle manipulation of familial love when the realization comes that even love can sometimes choke the prospect of growth if entwined with an intention to manipulate. This itself is a painful realization because it's a leap in understanding that those who love you will not always have the best for you. Setting boundaries in family relationships is difficult, but setting boundaries can allow someone to make a path of their own, independent of the weight of inherited expectations. The wolves and sheep, a variation on the metaphor. We come across this metaphor a lot. Wolves in sheep's skin, which just conjures up images of predators disguising themselves as prey. But imagine a metaphorical reversal of that. What if, in certain family dynamics, it is the sheep meek, timorous and conformist who masquerade as wolves? What if the real threat wasn't the aggressive, dominant figure, rather the insidious little carriers of mediocrity, masquerading as forces of leadership while really being complacent? In their natural state, wolves are intelligent, loyal and social animals that work in unison to protect one another and demonstrate leadership and tenacity. The dynamic changes among the sheep who have taken on an outward demeanor without substance. These would be the sheep in wolves' clothing, the ones that seem to be leading but, in reality, are riding on the coattails of fear, passivity and resistance to change. They stick to old patterns, suppress individuality and resist anything that would shake up the status quo. In a family, these sheep can hold back the progress of their more free-thinking brethren, those who, like wolves, would challenge an established norm for a new way of being. These black sheep are often shunned, not because they lack value, but because somehow they manage to threaten the fragile balance of conformity upon which the sheep depend to feel secure. The wolves in sheep's clothing foist a quiet tyranny of the mundane, where unwritten rules ensure safety supersedes growth, tradition is favored over progress, and fear replaces freedom. It is in these very environs that the true leader visionary, ambitious and courageous, is often faced with the cruel choice of either sticking around and succumbing to the will of the flock, or breaking loose to chalk out a path of his own. Leaving the family structure is emotionally painful, sometimes quite necessary for one's personal growth. Though ostracized and misunderstood, the wolves are truly those that break the cycle of stagnation. Trauma bonds and the chain of obligation Trauma bonds forge in the fire of mutual suffering. When someone plays the role of lifeline during a critical juncture in your life, a deep and intense emotional bond one that is very hard to cut is formed. These bonds, though rooted in very intense experiences, flower out into chains of obligation in which the relationship is less about mutual support and more about emotional debt. Think about a friend or family member who had been with you through one of the most terrifying times in your life. Their presence was life support, and eventually, over time, you started to lean on them, emotionally. The problem is that as time goes on, this relationship morphs. The person who was once your saviour ends up with power over you, and it is often unintentional. You feel indebted to them as if owing them your loyalty and attention, even when the relationship no longer serves your well-being. The complexity of trauma bonds lies in the conflicting emotions they evoke. Gratitude mixed with resentment, loyalty mingled with guilt. Leaving a trauma bond means a feeling of betrayal, and not just to the other person, but to the shared experience that bonded you together in the first place. Yet sticking in such relationships can bring one's life to a standstill. The endless obligation no longer a reflection of one's needs and desires. The way out of trauma bonds lies in recognition that what happened in the past does not create an obligation for the future. You can acknowledge the part someone has played in your life without compromising your autonomy and sense of self. To face emotions related to these bonds and to assert a right to a self at will, debt-free existence is to show great courage. The black sheep, breaking the cycle. The term black sheep can be analogous to the outcast and the misfit, 
one who does not fit into the mold of normalcy inside their family or social circle. Ironically enough, it is very often the black sheep who proves to be the most awake and aware person in his immediate circle, having a clear view of the toxic dynamics unfolding before others who may choose to ignore them. They are also the ones that realize the expectation set forth by the family is not congruent with their values and find the strength to change the pattern. Being the black sheep is a two-edged sword. On one hand, it brings a sense of isolation, wherein you get to be rejected or put down for not fitting in. On the other hand, it does provide a chance for growth and self-realization at places that are unfrequented. The black sheep is that individual who questions unvoiced rules, refuses to succumb to the limitations set forth by the pack, and in the end seeks freedom from the shackles of conformity. A black sheep doesn't have an easy journey. It means touching deep, ingrained family beliefs and running the risk of losing the connection of love with one's family. It is through this questioning and rebellion though, that the black sheep is able to break himself free from the noxious cycles binding the family. They are the ones who set the pathways for change, not just for their own selves, but for the future generations too. Breaking the cycle often involves walking away from the family structure, both emotionally and sometimes physically. The decision is full of pain and uncertainty, but simultaneously a strong act of self-preservation. The black sheep intuitively realizes that there can be no real growth in a toxic environment. So by leaving, they make space for the healing to start in themselves and the family members left behind. The cycle of control, breaking free from subtle manipulation. Control in relationships is very often cloaked as concern or care, pops up in manners so subtle that they are almost instantly mistaken for love or guidance. A friend who keeps suggesting what you should do about something, a parent who knows what is best for you, or even a partner who makes casual passing suggestions in the interest of steering decisions. One of these is control eating away at personal autonomy with time. They are not, for the most part, malignant people plotting out of malice. They typically believe they are acting in your best interests. However, their actions are based on a deep-seated need to control their own fears and insecurities by controlling you. They cannot bear uncertainty, and so they try to eradicate it by dictating your actions, often out of your conscious awareness. The most dangerous thing about subtle control is that it is invisible. It sneaks up in your life through small, almost imperceptible means. Gradually, these micro-controls add up to the erosion of your capacity for independent action. You start doubting your judgment and heed other people's advice or opinions, even if those opinions go against your own desires. Subtle manipulation normally requires a good dose of self-awareness and an ability to differentiate when the care of somebody else is crossing into the field of control. It's done by setting boundaries, understanding your decision-making power that upholds your values and needs even if it costs disappointing or angering those who care for you. This may be difficult, not less vital in the process of restoring your autonomy to live authentically. The Wolf's Redemption, Reclaiming Strength and Leadership. Wolves have long held a place in literature as a symbol of aggression and danger. The truth, however, behind these animals is one of high intelligence, loyalty and great strength. In their natural state, they embody the qualities essential for leadership and survival qualities from which we, in our human condition, can learn much. The wolf's redemption lies in reclaiming these qualities for ourselves, stepping into roles of leadership and independence with authenticity and integrity. The wolf inside is self-reclaimed in all the sheepish, passive behaviors of submission, where the dynamics in families or social groups are driven by fear and control. This is about recognizing one's own strength and intelligence, taking the lead for oneself rather than being led by others. The redemption of the wolf doesn't deal with dominance or aggression, rather it's an issue of balance. Leading with wisdom, wolves allow the individual their sense while being in deep communal and loyal perspective. They protect their pack, but maintain independence too. Reclaiming one's inner wolf means stepping into the personal power space wherein one is confident and courageous enough to lead, having been set free from the toxic dynamics of frenemies, family and manipulation. You take back your power by breaking free from the vicious circles of control and manipulation that kept you down. You come to the forefront of your life, guided through by values, instincts and wisdom. The journey might be hard, 
but it is also liberative. The wolf in the end was not afraid for his aggressiveness, but respected for his wit and leading ability, the courage to walk alone. In the end, frenemies, family, and all the dynamic relationships between control and manipulation are processes involved in self-discovery and courage. At one point, a person needs to let go of those relationships that no longer add value to their life. Sometimes, this may mean walking alone. It is finding strength within oneself to take charge and lead one's life free from the expectations and limitations set by others. It does not mean leaving behind people you love. It is a coming into your own action, living authentically without fear of judgment or rejection. This is the ultimate act of respect for oneself and preservation. Ultimately, the courage to walk your own path is what sets you free, allowing you to live a life that is true to who you are, rather than who others want you to be. Not the black sheep, the outcast, but he who sees the wolf in truth is a leader, one who dares to live authentically without any fear of the pack. Thank you for spending time with us through Spookscope today. Feel free to share your knowledge and wisdom in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family. Until next time, my dear Spooker, stay curious. Thank you.